Tick tock, time to rock. Good evening and good morning and good afternoon to everyone who's joining us from all around the world. I'm your friendly neighborhood philosopher, David Wood, and with me is Karen Cross, who is the political director for National Right to Life. Um, we usually chat for a few minutes here at the beginning while people uh, while people join in because they'll be coming from uh, Facebook or Twitter, um, uh, joining us in the chat. So why don't you start off, Karen, by telling us uh, what your organization does and why you do it? Great. Okay. National Right to Life is an organization made up of 50 state affiliates. Um, so we have state affiliate all over, state affiliates all over the country, and we have kind of a three-pronged approach to um, this issue of abortion and actually life um, it, from conception through natural death, but uh, education, legislation, and political action. So we need to educate ourselves, educate the public, educate the media, educate our legislators, and in doing so, we educate the legislators to pass pro-life legislation. But in order to pass pro-life legislation, we have to have, of course, pro-life legislators. So um, essentially, that's the three-pronged pronged aplo- oh, I'm sorry, approach. And we do that uh, on the state level, on the local levels, the state levels, and on the federal level. Mm-hmm. And uh, now, to be honest with you, I, uh, I've been involved in this since 1984. And, but the first night that I got involved, um, and, and I'm, I actually got involved in this as a result of my own two abortions. I, I just wanted to help women. That's all I wanted to do. And so we start, we were starting an organization to provide care to women free so that they didn't feel they had no choice but to have an abortion. And at that meeting that very night, I said, that was back in 1984. I said, I will do anything at all to help women and their babies. Just don't ask me to get involved in politics. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my position has changed somewhat since then. Being the political director of National Right to Life, I began to realize I started meeting women. Um, As I got involved, I started getting a a little more open about my own abortions. And I started meeting women who'd been lied to at the abortion clinics. They'd been misled. They'd felt they had no choice, all kinds of issues. And I thought, That should be illegal. It's not really their decision if somebody else pats them on the head and says, you pretty little thing, don't worry your head about the details. You know, I felt like if we had fully, fully informed consent, being told about fetal development um, in scientific terms, um, being told the... um, uh, that there are agencies in the state that would help them carry their child to term and the physical uh, risks and psychological risks to abortion as well as childbirth. But I felt if they had the full information, truthful information, that some would change their minds. And uh, so we tried to pass a law. Mm-hmm. And Senator Jay Spears kept blocking that legislation. And finally, I th- she was the chair of finance. And I thought, you know, if we could just... If we, if she weren't there, you know, if, if she weren't reelected, then we, maybe we could pass this law. And so we organized in her district and lo and behold, the almighty chair, Senator Jay Spears lost her election. And I've been in love with politics ever since because we were able to go on, pass the legislation. And the first year that data was available after that, that we could measure this, the pregnancy rates stayed the same, but there were hundreds fewer abortions. So what I believe to be true did turn out to be true now now, uh uh, so so this wasn't this wasn't some sort of law against abortion this was just some sort of law about giving people information or or yes giving them accurate information about abortion Mm -hmm. right okay so so and so what you're saying is that just by uh being active politically in that situation where the government was required to give people more information so that they make an, an informed decision that actually had uh, a, a a statistical impact on abortions. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Yes. In fact, just um, passing by virtue of passing any pro life legislation, lives are saved. The process of passing it, the educational value that comes, for instance, the partial birth abortion ban. When we passed that mm-hmm. back in, um, hmm, it's been ten years or so now, thirteen maybe. Um, but just when people would hear 
the description of what happens with a partial birth abortion. This is late in pregnancy. And um, I, I remember even the pushback from pastors and from others in the community saying that ha- that's not happening here. It's happening in China. No, 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 no. It was happening here in the United States. And it was a late abortion on live children who were in most cases healthy. And it's, it's, a, it's a gruesome type of procedure. Um, but just the process of passing that and the discussion that surrounds it saves lives because girls are in the pain capable unborn child protection act. We're trying to pass right now saying that after 20 weeks, when the baby can feel pain, that there shouldn't be abortion and, and young girls and or women who are pregnant might hear that, Oh, the baby can feel pain, something that you're not likely to hear at the abortion clinic. Mm-hmm. So in fact, they're more likely to show a diagram of an empty uterus in their scientifically accurate information that they give these little girls or women or whoever um, who's pregnant. So um, at any rate, just one piece of legislation, the Hyde Amendment, that restricts the funding of abortion, that's all it does in limited circumstances. It only funds abortion in very limited circumstances. That piece of legislation is attributed to saving almost or about 2 million people who are alive today from that federal piece of legislation. Okay. So, and the, the, the reason I think this is important is I've heard from, uh, from lots of people when there's a discussion about, um, uh, about the pro-life movement. Um, if I'm speaking at a church or something, and sometimes there'll, there'll be a table there. If there's a conference, there'll be a, a table where people are sharing, um, resources about what, uh, what abortion actually is. And, uh, you know, I bring up, uh, the political situation. The response I get very often is, um, well, we're, we're, we're not interested in the, in, in the, in the political side of it. We're interested in, in the moral side. Um, so they, in other words, they focus on trying to show people that abortion is wrong without um, being politically active with it. So you're saying that, that the, that the politics does play an important role here. And so this, these, oh, would be, these would be a, a sort of two pronged approach and, and both sides are necessary. Absolutely necessary. And in fact, morality um, it is hard to legislate morality, but our laws are all based on morals. Saying you can't steal and 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 um, uh, you can't murder someone. There are all kinds of laws that are created to protect our lives. Mm-hmm. And abortion, we can protect an awful lot of lives um, through uh, passage of legislation that that protects just not not just the baby, but the mother too. Um, I believe um, sincerely that. Mothers are deeply affected by abortion, and it it doesn't just hurt the baby, but the mother and the families as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, uh, for people uh, who normally join in to uh, to my live streams or watch my videos, I I I talk about abortion every once in a while when something really really uh, outrages me in the news. But normally, I'm I'm focused on different things. Uh, so they may be wondering, hey, why are we having a live stream on this? And uh, in fact, there is something that that totally, <laughs> totally enraged me recently, and made uh, made me want to want to talk about this right now. And I'm just going to put up a, a tweet for everyone, and so they can see. This is from New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, and he says the Reproductive Health Act is now law in New York State. We lit the spire pink to celebrate. So that is the Freedom Tower, this, which is basically the, the new World Trade Center for everyone who isn't familiar with New York. Um, but uh, the, the, the two towers got knocked down during the 9-11 attacks. And here we have uh, the Freedom Tower, which stands there now. And the governor lit up the tower pink in honor of the Reproductive Health Act. And uh, there, there are videos going around. I, I might, I might make a separate video on this, going through some of the video footage. But there, there, there's video going around of when the law was actually passed um, in New York, and the cheers and celebration from uh, the yeah. legislators and the, the people who are watching. And uh, so, w- what is this? What is this uh, new uh, new law in New York? Okay, um, on on the anniversary, I think it was the 46th anniversary of Roe versus Wade on January 22nd. Um, this is a law that they've actually been trying to pass. I remember, it's, I think it was around 2006, I went and spoke in New York. And one of the things that we were doing while I was there is lobbying against this reproductive health care 
I mean, the, the Reproductive Health Act. And, um, and this is a pu- perfect example of why elections are so important. Mm-hmm. The consequences to this most recent election in 2018 in New York, they finally had the numbers that they needed in the Senate to pass this atrocious bill. But what the Reproductive Health Act does is it, is it goes far beyond what Roe versus Wade did. What it does is it declares abortion as a fundamental right. Now, fundamental rights are, are, you know, they can't be taken away. They're they're like above all else. And, you know, it's sad because in our Declaration of Independence, the first right life (laughs) is life. Right. The first right. And the the, and and our government was charged with um, protecting life liberty and the pursuit of happiness and um and the and the basic right of the government is to protect life but whether it's from other countries or civilly or criminally where where people are trying to attack us here on our own soil um that's what the that's what our government is here for that's what we set in our in our declaration of independence and our constitution and yet this very government in new york saw fit and cheered on the ability to kill unborn children till the moment of birth. Not only did they want to kill children up until the moment of birth, but if that child happens to be born alive, there is, n- there is nothing that requires um, even comfort care for that baby who was born alive. So it goes beyond Roe. And then it allows, in addition to doctors, it allows midwives and practitioners to perform abortions. It um, And should the girl or woman decide that she wants to carry this child, she has chosen life. If her boyfriend or anyone, her the husband, the boyfriend, or even a stranger should attack her and cause the demise or the death of her, her unborn child that she wants, there are not going to be repercussions except, um, I mean, her attack on her body, but but um, that would not be considered murder or um, taking of a human life. I mean, just unbelievable how far the scope it um, and it, 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 it that they that what they did um, on the twenty second. So um, that that last point that you were making there. So if uh, if a man punches a a non pregnant woman in the stomach, and uh, he would he would be charged with with some sort of assault or battery or something mm-hmm. like that. What you're saying is that um, before this law, before this law, in various places in in, in or, and, and still in various places in the country, if a man punches a pregnant woman in the stomach and causes the death of her baby, that would be some additional charge apart from the yes. damage to her. It would be some sort of additional charge with respect to the baby. But now in New York, if you there's no charge for anything that happens to the baby because the baby is not considered uh, a, what, a, a, a living human being or something like that until the baby's person. born. So <laughs> right. not a person. Right, in fact, one of the senators, uh, Kathy Young from Olingen, New York, um, Senator Kathy Young offered an amendment that would um, uh, make it a class D felony for knowingly assaulting a pregnant woman. Mm-hmm. And it was um, struck down. And I think it was on um, party lines. It was voted down on party lines at any rate with the Republicans voting to protect women who were pregnant because this puts women who are pregnant and want this baby at risk. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, now there's a federal law that said it's an unborn child, unborn victims of violence act. Um, is, but if, so if she's in New York on federal land, she would be protected. But other than that, mm-hmm. in New York, she is not protected. Um, and so I- that if he, he can punch her in the stomach, now she, he can get in trouble for assault to her. But if the baby dies or has injury, um, mm-hmm. That's that's uh, they decide they did not want that to be considered a, whatever a class D felony is. Now, now, guys, uh, I just want to put this to uh, the people in the in the chat over here. Guys, doesn't it doesn't it somehow seem morally obvious that, yes, it's it's bad. It's bad. And you're a total scumbag if you punch a woman in the chest. 
or in the stomach or in her face or wherever. But if you punch a pregnant woman in the chest or in the stomach or in the face and cause damage to her baby, that that should be something that should be in a, in a different category, in a new category, that there should be some uh, additional ramifications for something like that. And that politicians who say, no, there should be no difference because we're not, we're not considering the baby at all. Don't you think that somehow their moral compass has gone out of whack here? Um, let me know what you think over there in the, uh, in the chat. Um, so we have a, we have a couple of things. So, so you've pointed out that the way this is being, um, proclaimed, um, by the politicians who put this out and by the supporters is that it's simply, um, enforcing Roe versus Wade in the state of New York so that it, it can't be touched if there are changes in the federal government. So you've pointed out that's simply false. This, this is, they're it going, is they're going way beyond Roe versus Wade here. Absolutely. In, for instance, Roe v. Wade allowed for Unborn Victims of Violence Act. They allowed for parents' right to know laws, informed consent laws, um, restricting funding of abortion. They allowed, uh, you know, there are a lot of restrictions that are allowed. For instance, the part of the, the Partial Birth Abortion Ban Act. Mm-hmm. And in many states have um, laws to protect babies uh, it's called a pain capable unborn child protection act babies um protecting babies and i actually have some models here with me we're talking about now in new york this baby's about 30 weeks into the pregnancy i don't know if you can see this or not i'll hold it him or her right here mm-hmm. but um this is about 30 weeks so they're talking about even beyond this into 40 weeks, all 40 weeks of pregnancy. From this point on, this is about 20 weeks into the pregnancy, the baby can feel pain. There is medical scientific evidence that the babies can feel pain. Anybody, and I know people who have had babies who are born not many weeks after this and survived. And when you, if you were to poke that baby with a pin, the baby will jerk away and cry out because it hurts the baby. The babies can feel pain. And, um, but those kinds of laws are allowed under Roe. They've been upheld by our Supreme Court. Or I don't know about pain capable, but but it, they have uh, they are in existence around the country. And this um, the state of New York felt they had a law that after 24 weeks, um, that's where we were prior to the 22nd. Up until 24 weeks, um, you could have an abortion in New York. Now it goes beyond. And um, one of the things I'll, I just want to show you, and some people will argue, well, this is only for health of the mother or for the life of the mother, because you'll see those words mm-hmm. in the, the language of the bill. But what they're not taking into consideration, the lawmakers know this, but some people may not understand um, what Roe v. Wade and Dovey Bolton did back in 1973. Well, what Roe v. Wade and Dovey Bolton did on January 22nd, 1973, um, Roe v. Wade divided up the pregnancy into trimesters and gave different rules for each trimester. So they said that in the first trimester, a woman could have an abortion for any reason, and um, the states couldn't determine where those were held. Uh, they were done. In the second three months, um, trimester that 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 um, a woman could have an abortion still for any reason but the states could start determining where those abortions you know they, they could leave they could um, uh, pass laws as to where it was done and by whom and so on and then in the third trimester they said a woman could have an abortion only for reasons of health so a lot of people, even today, think that abortion is only legal throughout the first three months, which is not true. That's not what Roe versus Wade did, because there was a companion decision handed down that day called Dovey Bolton. And what Dovey Bolton did was define health so broadly to include um, all factors, physical, psychological, emotional, familial, um, and age, anything relevant to the well-being of the mother. So it was so broadly defined, um, which is why many states began to pass laws saying only up until 24 weeks or 20 weeks and so on. Um, and, and then after that, they have, it, it was never illegal, even prior to Roe v. Wade, for a woman to have an abortion to save her life. 
that was never a problem. She could, she could, uh, you know, it's, um, it's, it's rare that uh, a woman, especially late in pregnancy, in fact, late in pregnancy, I've talked to ob gynes who have been doing this for decades. They, I, I know some, mm-hmm. and they say there is no reason to kill an unborn child because a woman uh, need you know, it, late in pregnancy yeah, for, I, to I, save her life. I, I've it, seen, I've you seen... don't have to kill the baby. You can try to deliver the baby quickly, and maybe the baby won't survive, but you do not have to kill that mm-hmm. child to save her life. Yeah, everyone, you, you need to understand that point because I, I saw uh, numerous uh, OBGYNs also comments on that that uh, because we're, we're saying this because this is being – Uh, touted as one of the benefits of this new law is that, you know, in in cases where a woman requires a late term abortion for medical reasons to save her life. Well, now now the 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 politicians are jumping in there to save her life. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One, you're pointing out that's never been an issue. If a woman's life is in danger, then then you know, they they would be allowed to do medical procedures to save her. But in addition, um, what what you saw from OBGYNs and and I've seen over and over again, as they pointed out, we've we've never seen a situation where a woman's life is in jeopardy and the solution would be a late term abortion. They say, yes, we might need to induce labor. We might need to get the baby out, but it's never, oh, we need to kill the baby first inside of her then get the baby out. There's no point to that. There's there. In other words, there's no medical reason to do that. And therefore, this law is is not doing what they're they're claiming. They're trying to put everything in terms of, oh, we're trying to protect women and we're just trying to protect rights here. And they're not doing it at all. So there has to be there has to be different reasons for for all of this here. Right. In fact, some of the abortion procedures that they want to do that kills the baby or are actually more dangerous for the woman. And one of the procedures, um, and this has now fortunately been up, uh, is illegal. The, I keep going back to the partial birth abortion ban, but that was a procedure in which they actually would deliver the baby breech mm-hmm. on purpose. And, and you know, if you're, if, if, if you've ever, um, had a, you know, anyone who's, been pregnant or had a pregnant wife or girlfriend knows they don't want the baby to be delivered breech because it's more dangerous for the baby and the mother. And, um, but yet that procedure required them to deliver the baby breech rather than naturally and, um, which took longer and is more dangerous to the woman. And uh, what they need to do if her life is immediately threatened by the pregnancy it isn't a procedure that say takes three days or a procedure mm-hmm. that requires a, 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 an odd breach delivery, but something that gets the baby out quickly. Mm-hmm. And so, and, so well, and, and to try to save both. Mm-hmm. And what, what you were what you're just pointing out there with the with the with the three days. Um, so suppose a woman had a um, uh, had a situation where they have to get the baby out. The abortion procedures for a late term abortion they actually take a few days. To, uh, to 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 get ready, so they start a medical process to to start making her go into labor, and they have to kill the baby and so, and so on. And this takes about three days to get the baby out. Whereas I saw I saw one um w- one doctor uh, testifying. He says if 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 it's an emergency, I can I can get that baby delivered in about an hour. If it's right. an emergency, he said I can get I can get the I can get the baby uh, uh, in an emergency situation. I can have that baby born in about an hour. And so if there was an, a, a medical scenario where the woman's life was in danger, um, the the live birth is, seems to be much safer than the methods that they would be used to to kill the baby. And so it's it's the exact opposite of what they're saying. They're saying, hey, this is this is to protect women. This not protecting women at all. This would be a more dangerous course for a woman who's actually uh, having some sort of medical complications. This would be a more dangerous way to go about it. And yet it's being put forward to sell it to the public right. as this is something that we're, we're trying to protect women here. Right. Yeah. And it's sad. And and that's not even so that we're talking about some of the physical complications. But then we're talking. There are also psychological complications to abortion that a woman, you know, she she's in a stressful situation, especially young girls. I, I remember uh, a young girl. I mean, 
I didn't know her as a young girl, but I met her as a woman. But when she was 16 years old, she was 18 weeks pregnant, 18 weeks. So about this, this size. She, before the abortion, they were going to do a saline abortion for her. And what that requires is, um, they inject a high powered salt, they withdraw some amniotic fluid and inject a high powered salt solution. And then the baby is, of course, kicking and breathing and, and swimming. And, but now he's, he's swallowing the salt solution and it burns the baby and also poisons the baby. And at some point the baby is, del- she has to still go, um, through delivery, um, and, uh, labor, but she asked them, is it a baby? Now, that's a legitimate question. And they told her it's it's like tissue, like that of liver. Okay. <clears throat> now, if your liver looks like this, then we're in trouble. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but so that so she made a decision based on something that wasn't even true. And th- and sometime later, she saw a picture on the cover of Newsweek magazine, an unborn child at 16 weeks with fingers and toes and arms and legs because they can't protect her from the truth forever. And she was devastated. Years later, she sent away for her medical records and contained in those medical records was a death certificate for a baby girl. This happened in, in Pittsburgh. Um, she got, had a death certificate for a baby girl who had been cremated. So, um, you know, this is atrocious that we would lie to women, have them go through. Now, some people, I think, think, oh, it's for the better good, you know, that somehow this baby's life would have been. But, you know, there are a lot of people who are born in poverty and have wonderful lives. To, to We can't determine at birth how that child or even pre-birth, what kind of life this child is going to have. Some of us may have had parents who may have been discarded, not cared for. They may have been in an, an orphanage, or but they're still valuable. They still, every one of us, I believe, has an intrinsic value and worth, a fundamental right to life. And um, and yet, uh, they, there are people who I think have, I don't want to say it's a bigoted point of view, but they have this point of view that you can't be happy and be poor. Or, you know, I grew up, my dad was in the military, okay? We didn't have a lot. I don't know that we were poor, but mom had to really scrimp to to feed us, you know? And, and um, but I didn't know that. I was a happy kid. I was happy. And, uh, and so it's not based on who we are and what our value is shouldn't be based mm-hmm. on how many things we have. Yeah, that, and, that's, that, that's a, that's some ridiculous reasoning there because uh Mm -hmm. um you know my mom got pregnant with me when she was 15 years old um never graduated high school grew up in a west virginia trailer park and so Mm -hmm. but i mean so imagine it it would be very easy to say well you know she should have aborted you to save you this life of of suffering and stuff and what what are you talking about don't abort me yeah no i like like my life i like my life and and i and 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 i look back on you know uh I look back on things growing up in a West Virginia trailer park and I'm glad, you know, I'm, I'm glad that, 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 that helped shape my character along the way, yeah. make me not so attached to material things and so on. And so the idea that, well, you know, this 15 year old pregnant girl is going to really have to struggle. Well, that, that, that there are worse things in the world than, you know, needing to, to struggle for a while in order to take care of a, of another human being. Um, yeah. 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 And then uh, I know, um, I had a similar situation, except that what I did the summer before my senior year in high school, I was pregnant and I didn't look into other options. I, um, you know, it was like with, I went to my mom who, um, you know, I had a life ahead of me. I I, I was in Mm -hmm. honors classes and, and, and we were looking at it as more like getting a tooth pulled. It mm-hmm. was legal. So we, some people equate legality with being okay or right. And, um, so she took me to that abortion. Like I said, we didn't talk, think about it and we never talked, we didn't talk about it afterward. Um, but within three months, I was pregnant again. And this time I hid the pregnancy. Now, the, 
and until the day I felt her kick. And then my God bless my mom. She's a helper. Um, she helped me schedule a wedding. So, um, but the only difference here, I am a high school senior. Um, the only difference between the two pregnancies was my determination to give life to this child. Otherwise, my circumstances were exactly the same. And yet, I will never regret giving life to that girl. And uh, I'm, she's the mother of my grandson. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and it's so funny because, and, and, and I've, I did have another abortion, and it's too much to go into now, but um, it, I felt I had no choice that time with the second abortion. I was a, a single mother of a little girl, and... I I really felt for a lot of reasons, and I was a Christian, and people need to understand that even little Christian girls make mistakes, and um, uh, at any rate, part of the reason I had that abortion was to hide the pregnancy from my church, from my pastor, from my Bible study, and um, and afraid I'd lose my job. At any rate, um, I... It was years later, and it's meant different things all through my life, but um, as I grew older, and, and when I held my grandson for the first time, looking in these little blue eyes, got the little tuft of blonde hair up there, and I realized I didn't abort two children. I aborted generations of children, generations. In fact, um, in Deuteronomy, it says, choose life then that you and your descendants may live, and... I, you know, um, it, it became very, very real to me. And in fact, um, I'll tell you, it's another, another story. I'll just try to be quicker with it. But a, my Norwegian great grandmother was a teenage, a pregnant teenage girl in a foreign land and scared, you know, I mean, back then the, the father of the baby is on, has sailed away on a boat. Back then you couldn't, text somebody and say because 105 years ago you know so she couldn't text him and say hey Mm -hmm. guess what you know so here she is in brooklyn new york and giving birth to a child out of wedlock in this foreign land scared and what she had fortunately that was 105 years ago and not now because in New York now, they would have pressured this little scared immigrant to abort this child. And then my grandmother, my mother, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, my sister, my brother, my nieces and nephews and my children and my grandson, none of us could have existed from that one decision to choose life or death. And then, um, you know, it's just amazing that in that city i mean in in that state you know um uh so much life came from Mm -hmm. her decision and uh but it could have been i could have been a statistic um my mom all of us all of those when we go to see family all of us could have been simple statistics Mm -hmm. there's a uh, uh you mentioned you mentioned deuteronomy um but in uh, in Genesis, in the opening chapters of Genesis, when uh, Cain kills Abel, and God says, uh, "Your your brother's blood cries out to me cries from out. the ground." Um, the, the, the Jewish, there are Jewish commentators who've pointed out that it doesn't actually say blood; it says, "Your brother's bloods cry out to me from the ground." It's plural for the generation. Yeah, and so and so the Jewish commentators said that it's because when you kill someone you're killing all his future generations uh as well. That's in Mishnah Sanhedrin Jewish commentary on uh on Genesis there. And so uh so absolutely correct from a from a biblical yeah. perspective that uh, making a decision to kill someone isn't just making a decision to kill that person. It's, it's hey, I'm wiping out all your future generations that, mm-hmm. uh, that would have other, otherwise uh, come from you. Um, now, um, as, far as, uh, as far as the New York, the New York law there, um, one of the, uh, the, the interesting things is that it, you, you said it's all the way up to birth, up until birth, that, that you can have an abortion now? Right. And if the baby is born alive, somehow survives the abortion, they do not have to 
provide care. Here's a, a living child now outside the womb, breathing and living. They don't have to even, they don't have to provide medical care and they don't have to provide comfort care. I know women, Melissa Oden, um, uh, Gianna Jessen, um, Sarah Smith. I, I can't think of all the, the, the people that I've met who survived abortion and are here. Exa- Melissa has two children, two daughters, you know, um, but, uh, they, um, they, they can be discarded, you know, some, they can just, so to, that's infanticide. So Do not so, provide the same level of care you would any other bo- baby born at the same gestational age. So j- just just to be clear on, on what this means, um, they're talking about in, in New York, uh, you would kill the baby by lethal injection. And many people have, have been pointing out that mm-hmm. uh, New York legislators view it as wrong to uh, give a lethal injection to a mass murderer. So you don't do that. But to a full term baby, you can. But just to be clear on what this means, it, it, and I'm trying to I'm trying to understand it myself, so I'm asking if this is correct. If you let's say um, you wanted to, you decided to abort this baby, and he's he's full term, and so you give him some sort of injection, but it doesn't go correctly. Maybe you miss a little bit, and the baby survives and is born. Mm-hmm. They would then just let that baby die. No comfort care, nothing. They could just right. put the baby aside and then let the baby die. Right. Exactly. And um, in fact, um, this is uh, from a long time ago, but I, I have and I don't know how well you can see this, but um, this is a picture of Anna Rosa Rodriguez. This is New York, by the way. She was actually this little. Can you see? Yep. I don't know. If, there you go. We can see. perfect. OK, that's Anna Rosa Rodriguez. Well, um, this this was in a um, she was aborted in New York City. And um, what happened was the, the abortionist shouldn't have done it. What he did was he went in to do a dismemberment abortion. He thought she was earlier in the pregnancy. So he went in, I guess, with a forceps or whatever. You grab the instrument mm-hmm. that you use. And he, what they do is they tug on something and they pull it out. And he pulled out an arm. And when he saw the arm, he realized that she was farther along than they thought she was. So he stopped the abortion and she was delivered. And um, so, as you can see, Anna Rosa is missing her arm. But now he wouldn't have had to stop the abortion, mm-hmm. nor would he, had she at, somehow been delivered, would he have had to try to save her life. And um, I just don't understand. There are people who would take, there is no such thing as an unwanted child. And there are people who would care for any child regardless of because some people some people say you need to have abortion late in pregnancy because you might not find out there's a disability of some sort they you know we have all we have make special ramps for people with disabilities and we have all these laws the ada laws and yet there's an attack by physicians and by people on anybody who may have a disability in the womb and it's it's real they um the attitude is horrible the pressure that's put on families to abort children who have disabilities whether it's down syndrome or any other disability um so that they they but there are families who would adopt children in fact i remember a, a young girl who um was planning an abortion and she <clears throat> finally Decided she was going to give birth. We convinced her not to abort the child. She was a, a nurse at WVU, a nursing student, not a nurse. And uh, we convinced her that she could do this. So then she, the day she went to find out with an ultrasound whether it was a boy or a girl, she found out it was a girl. But they also told her the baby had spina bifida and hydrocephalus. And then the genetic, the people with, in, with genetic backgrounds swooped in to try to convince her how horrible this would be for her and for the baby if she would give birth to this child. And the pressures on her to abort that child were intense. And um, so she was thinking, you know, she was told the baby was going to die a horrible death within hours after birth and so on and so on. Um, but then we convinced her, we will find somebody to adopt this baby. And she said, okay. 
So then she could, they refused at WVU to help her carry her child to term and deliver the baby, sew up the back and put a shunt in. This is long ago before they have the, what they have today. Um, and she went to Pittsburgh. They helped her. She fell in love with this child and uh, decided not to place her for adoption. And, and she was able, she and her mother raised this little girl. And, uh, and she's lived, she's a very happy, smart girl, woman now. Um, she's probably 27 now, turning 28 next month, in fact, I, in February. But, um, but there's so much pressure and they lied to her to try to convince her to abort this child. And I don't know why there's such, because I believe that families, that God, I'm a Christian, so I believe that God allows families who are special enough to have children with needs because he can trust them with them. And anyway, um, it's just. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm so you, because you're bringing it up there, there, there can be, there can be all, all kinds of, uh, reasons and justifications um for abortion and so in that situation of a of a young girl being told hey you know your your baby's going to have all these problems um there are a, a girl like that if she if she had had an abortion i would look and i wouldn't say this girl's evil for the decision no, she made not. um or or you know a 15 year old girl 17 year old girl 20 year old girl even who um just isn't aware of all the all the all the facts and um has a has a has a what i would say moral compass that is not functioning uh properly due to a lot usually typically a lot of misinformation um so there, there are situations where i wouldn't look at uh, a girl who's decided to have an abortion and say this is a this is a sick evil person uh, i would say this is a person who's who's making a mistake and and, and sadly the exactly. mistake the mistake is involving you know her 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 offspring but with with the new legislations and the misinformation they're constantly twisting things mm -hmm. and misrepresent it's a, it's a situation now where i look and i say i'm not just saying i'm not just thinking that you guys are mistaken here or it, it seems evil, right? It seems it seems sick and twisted now. Mm -hmm. um, if you look back in, in recent, uh, there was there was a, a situation where uh, uh, it was the it was the Daily Show a couple I think two two and a half years ago, where um, uh, some abortion restrictions in Texas uh, mm -hmm. got got struck down, and then the Daily Show tweeted out. Um, in, in order to celebrate this new, you know, your new, your new ability to have an abortion, go impregnate someone. So they're actually saying, and, and they're thinking that this is, this is funny. This is a joke. Go impregnate someone just to have an abortion. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, um, just this, this past year, you had that Netflix program where a woman had a, a celebration of abortion mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, was, was singing God, God bless a abortion and so on. And so, and then of course you have the, the, the shout your abortion shirts now. And, yeah. and mm -hmm. th so the situation is you, a lot of Democrats in, in, you know, over the past couple of decades have said things along the lines of, yes, we are defending a, a woman's right to choose, but we are at least acknowledging that this is bad, that this is a regrettable situation. And so they were basically saying we want abortions to be legal, safe and rare. Right. So they wanted that okay. was that was the that was the mantra for a while. Legal, uh, safe. So you wanted the best care and rare. And so I would look at them and I'd say, well, no, I don't think you should be having abortions. But, you know, at least you're acknowledging that it's not that it's not a good thing, that aborting a baby mm -hmm. is not a is not a good thing. Whereas with the shout abortion and God bless abortion and hey, there's a new rule, go out and impregnate someone so they can have an abortion. It's becoming a celebration of killing babies. And like the cooler you are, the more you praise having abortion. And this mm -hmm. is the situation where, I mean, it seems like people are getting just sicker and sicker and sicker. And to where mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's where it's not, it's not someone saying, you know, on the one hand, we, we have to think about women. On the other hand, we have to think about the babies and well, I'm going to, I'm weighing this and I'm coming down in favor of, 
uh, a woman's right to choose more so than the baby. But I understand that kill, you know kill, kill, aborting the baby is right. a is a problem. I'm just coming down on this side, and we would disagree mm-hmm. with the decision. But now it's now it's it's more like ha ha ha, you baby, we can't wait to abort you. It's so fun. Yeah, and, it's uh, such a great thing, you know. And it's and I don't I know that most I think most women or girls who feel pressure to have an abortion do so. And it is painful to them. Unfortunately, the legislators themselves aren't acknowledging this horrendous. And actually, what they're doing is putting more women in a position where they are forced to make a decision they don't want because they're not they're they're legalizing it throughout pregnancy instead of saying, you know what, you're a woman and you shouldn't have to abort your child to succeed in life. You know, you shouldn't have to, um, you know, your child shouldn't have to die so that you can live uh, a better life. And, and um, I, you know, I wouldn't trade my life. I, you know, it wasn't easy being a young teenage mom. It wasn't, but I, I would never trade what I had and what I have with her um, for you know, for any successes I may have. In fact, I, I I I'm I have I have a good life, and and that was even with a child at a young age. And um, any anyway. rate, yeah. And um, um, as far as uh the the late term abortions what would the I'm, I'm trying to think of any sort of biological difference between a baby that's born and a baby 10 minutes before he's born mm-hmm. and yeah. the, the reason i'm thinking of that is there are there are distinctions that you can make the the clearest the clearest distinction that you can make is before conception after conception uh that so that's the clearest that's the clearest line right. that you could draw there right. um they try they, they try to make others you know with the with the trimesters and with the you know with the different mm-hmm. you know with the with the the uh, the, the different stages of development mm-hmm. they uh right. but they're 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 not always clear and right. now the the distinction they're making is well before the baby comes out of the mom and after the baby comes out of the mom and they would say, except unless the abortion has already been started and the baby is born, um, that once the baby goes from here to here, it moves. The baby moves from here to here. Then it would it would be immoral and wrong, and it would be murder to kill the baby. But you know, if you back up ten minutes and the baby's over here, still inside the mother, then no problem whatsoever. Um, and to have that radical a shift between a baby moving 18 inches mm-hmm. from one place to another. Uh, but other than that, no, no, no biological difference in the baby. No. And, and to have that be the distinction between there's absolutely nothing wrong with killing the baby here. And even if it wasn't the mother's will, if you came in and punched her in the stomach, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be in trouble for, for the damage done to the baby. Mm-hmm. But if that baby moves, 18 inches that way and is now outside of the mother well then it is a human person and uh you can kill the baby and you're going to jail forever we're not going to lethally inject you like we do the babies but um you're 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 going to to jail for a very long time because now the baby is a person um that that from a moral and ethical perspective that's that's idiotic nonsense right there's there's yeah Mm -hmm. and yeah yeah well, this is... and and actually, you know, if you if you start moving back through the pregnancy, you know, um, so uh, let me I'm going to start from the beginning. Then at conception, at conception, we actually have a unique individual who's either male or female. The hair color and eye color, the athletic ability, um, so a lot of things are already determined in that first in that beginning cell. No, I'm not talking about the separation, you know, before when it's when it's an egg and sperm, but once they unite and and conception has taken place, we were once that one cell which mm-hmm. split into two, two into four, four into eight and so on. It, we we all grow by cell doublings. And um but when then we began to to take shape and um 
it, you know, a lot of people don't realize that th- about three weeks into the pregnancy, our heart is already beating a blood type possibly different than that of our mothers. And, um, at 10 weeks, this is kind of, I, I don't know if you can see that very well, but at 10 weeks, our little tiny feet are perfectly formed. They're just very, very tiny. We could stand on our, mo- on our mother's, uh, fi- our pinky finger nail. And, um, but by about 12, by about this age, this is when most of the abortions take place is up, about, up until about this age, about 90% of abortions take place then. But at that point, we have brain waves, we have, um, uh, all organ systems are actually present and functioning. They even have tiny little liquid bowel movements and I swim around with a natural swimmer stroke. It's unbelievable what now, of course, with ultrasound, people can see this now. Decades ago, we didn't have the advantage of ultrasound. But now, most people have that window to the womb, and we can actually see our children in their swimming, which is why ultrasound laws are so effective, because they can't lie to the women about mm. what this product of conception is. They can actually see if they Will, are allowed to see the unborn child. They can see a tiny little baby with fingers and toes and heart beating and and uh, oh, you know, moving his mouth and his head mm-hmm. and just doing what little babies do, um, hidden away in the womb. Mm-hmm. Let's. Uh, uh, we have a few minutes left. Let's uh, let's take a few comments here because they actually uh, uh, allow us to expand on a few things here. Okay. Um, so we have a comment here. I remember when I first found out what abortions were as a child, I was horrified and baffled mm-hmm. that such evil was legal and that any human would want to uh, to do this. I couldn't understand it. Still don't. And so, so there, uh, as you pointed out, as far as informing people, this is someone who was informed about what, what abortions mm-hmm. actually were as a child. And there is a seems natural resistance. I'm wondering if that resistance would would be stronger among children who... Uh, who haven't, uh, it's black and white. It's more black and white for children. Um, as they get older and go through, especially public schools and college, they become indoctrinated a little bit. Um, which is why it's important. But, you know, young people today, I, I don't have the poll numbers. I'm, I even thought of it today, but it was a very busy day at work. Um, but the, the most recent poll numbers that came out show a majority of young people are actually pro-life. They support, uh, life or they oppose abortion in, in, um, uh, in larger numbers than, than those who don't. So this, it's really encouraging. The March for Life last week, it's unbelievable all the young people who come and, and are excited about protecting life. And, um, I, all the opportunities I get to speak in front of young people, I like to talk to them because I like to talk to kids about choices. I made a lot of good choices and bad choices. And, and, you know, they're, they're at a point where they're making those decisions, but the openness they are that, that they have to hearing this, unbelievable, mm-hmm. especially young people. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm guessing there's a, also a difference in statistics as far as uh, uh, the number of people who would, you know, just support le- people who are pro-choice. I'm guessing there's a, a difference in statistics between people who are just sort of generally pro-choice and people who would support late-term abortions. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. The, actually, the, um, only about, and I don't have the the most recent numbers, but um, it, it generally is about 13% of the public that supports this abortion on demand throughout pregnancy. Um, that's still a, far too many to me, but that means 87% of people do not support mm-hmm. abortion on demand throughout pregnancy. Um, I, 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 I find it mind boggling that they're, um, the medical standards that they're dropping to, to allow abortions mm-hmm. and, by non physicians mm-hmm. um, in New York. Um, yeah, for, but, for 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 people who say they're doing it to to keep women safer. Does, it, does everyone understand yeah. that? What they're they're saying that the people who can now perform the abortion don't need to actually be physicians, medical right? doctors. Yeah, right. you could just be a midwife or a nurse mm-hmm. or something, and this is right. supposed to keep women safer. No, safer. That's, a, that's a yeah, that's a kind of operation, right? Um, it is an invasive operation. It is a, a medical procedure, yep. very invasive. Uh, good one here. 
Uh, Tony says, consider adoption, not abortion. Plenty of childless couples out there willing to take in and provide a much needed home full of love. And you pointed out that there are people who are willing to adopt kids. I even know uh, Christian ministries that will go out, uh, mm -hmm. sort of uh, line up people in front of abortion clinics. And as a, as a young woman is going in there, will say, uh, here are seven people who are all willing to adopt your child right now. They will all, they're all willing to do yeah. that. And so uh, that's cool. But I, I would also think that, um, I would think that, because you know we're we're both Christians here, and I'm, I'm guessing most of the people over in the chat are Christians as well. That it needs to become more common knowledge in the church, and and even needs to be announced like regularly by pastors and mm -hmm. so on. Hey, you young girls, uh, you know we we want you to 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 grow up and get married and and have kids and be fruitful and multiply. If you ever veer from that course and end up getting pregnant, don't hide that. Don't hide mm -hmm. that from right. us, right? D and d definitely don't go get an abortion to try and uh, cover it up or to to hide your shame. What we would want you to do is tell us. We're, we're, no one's going. No one's going to to condemn you here. We love you. We've all made mistakes. And just so you know, your your church is going to be here to help you, to help you right. through this, to help that child. And that child is gonna gonna grow up with a big loving church family. I would I would hope that right. that churches would uh would do that. Here's one. Here's one that is, uh, this would be good for you. And this would be a sort of a good way to, to close out here. Um, this is, uh, from Lynn Amber. She says, is there anything someone outside of New York can do to get this overturned other than pray? So, so the question here is we've just seen some horrifying developments. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like these are the end of the horrifying developments. It seems like this is a trend that, that people right. are turning in a new, more horrifying direction. And what do we do other than pray? And you're the perfect person okay. to ask to ask about this. Thank you. OK. And we we have such a short amount of time. I know I just saw today that in in uh, uh, New Mexico, they're looking to pass something similar to this. And they have both houses and now they have the governor's uh, office. So it could happen there too, and it could happen in other states. Um, so what, what, um, praying does help and there are other, other things to do, but to say it in a short period of time is difficult. Um, if, if they want more information, they can follow us on Twitter. Um, it's at NRLC. I will, I will just, uh, just so everyone knows, I will put, uh, after we, after we close out, I will put all the links that she wants to share. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, I'll okay. put all I'll put all the links that, that you want me to share in the description box and in the in the comment section. Okay, because what happens in New York, what happens in New Mexico, what happens around the country affects all of us, and um, so and but there are things that all of us can that we can all do, and um, uh, it as far as this is concerned, right now I know they're trying to get. Um, we, for instance, we need to pay really close attention to elections because um, nothing can be done in, that I know of unless it can be challenged in court that it uh, somehow – and I haven't talked to uh, um, attorneys yet. Um, this has been very, very new development, and so to talk to – I haven't been, had an opportunity to talk to the attorneys in the office to see if this can be challenged in court. If so, that's very expensive, and it requires a lot. And But – it goes so far beyond Roe, but if they say it's based on the state constitution, it may have to be challenged there. But it, it all depends on the courts in New York as well, you know, on the state court level. Um, and just try to be informed. I'm glad that people are listening. Mm -hmm. Be informed and um, and and. In your own ground, try to make sure that your own legislators, we lost a lot of good people this, this last election. And it's, we cannot rest easy and allow, um, the other side, the people who are pro abortion, who may not say they are, they run. I don't know if you've heard of Emily's List, but Emily's List is a, an organization that supports only Democrat women who support abortion on demand for any reason and taxpayer funding of abortion. A lot of the, the, of the people who won were women winning even, even in conservative districts like in Oklahoma and Georgia and around the country in places. And, um, but they ran on things like pro providing child care to women, but their ultimate goal was for abortion on demand and, and, uh, 
taxpayer funding of abortion. And that's um, we're going to see a push that way. Also, in the federal level, there's a bill very similar to this Reproductive Health Act being offered in the Congress um, in the House. And um, fortunately, we have a stopgap in the Senate and a president. But um, so it's it's not just in New York that there are dangerous um, foreshadowing. It's it's all over the country and we need to be on our toes. So. uh People need to be educated, and mm-hmm. you will have will have uh, links to to uh, to resources where they can get educated. Yes. Uh, but then, uh, even people who are outside of New York right now can yes. uh, can be educating themselves and educating others, and yes. cutting through the misinformation. Because as you've pointed out, once people actually understand what's going on, mm-hmm. they most the vast majority of people do not support it, and so people need to cut through the smoke screens. And uh, people out. Guess what? It, we, we, we have awesome things like Facebook and Twitter. So that those of you who get mm-hmm. informed and learn the facts, you can share. You can share all of that with your friends in New York because you, you, mm-hmm. you're connected to all of them. And so if everyone right. if everyone learns the information and then shares it, uh, you've pointed out elections have consequences. And if enough people become outraged by the things um our elected officials do. That's the great thing about our constitutional republic. We can replace them. And the Absolutely. other, yeah. And the other thing is, uh, even people outside of New York who uh, have their own have their own legislators in their own areas can mm-hmm. uh, l- let it be known to their legislators. Don't go that route, uh, or or we are we are not going to put you in any sort of power over us. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you, Karen Cross, for joining us. And uh, in, in, in case of future developments where other places make similar laws, we hope to uh, have you back to uh, keep us up to date on the latest trends. I'd love to join you. All thank right. You. Thanks, everyone, for joining in. I'll be back um, in about an hour with Anthony talking about some completely different topics. And uh, again, all the information um, that, that Karen wants to share will be in the description box and the comments section. So be sure to come back once I have all that posted. God bless everyone.